Hey everybody, welcome once again to Behold Israel Young Adults Discipleship. It is so great. We look forward to this time so much being together with you guys from literally all over the planet. It's so much fun to just see your faces and to be encouraged as we just get to know the Lord uh, more and more together as we look to His Word. And, and really, that's our heart. Our heart and our desire is for you guys to continue to grow uh, in your relationship with the Lord, understanding you know, both prophetically how much he's shown us, uh, you know, that we can learn and understand at the same time how we can write these words on the tablet of our heart so that we can be doers, you know, of these words and not just hearers only. Today, I'm going to I'm going to start us out in prayer. And then uh, we got a few different, you know, we got a little a little poll, but it's different. It's different than normal um, in, li in light of we want to get your feedback on something. We're taking another new little initiative. Um, and so we wanted to get your heart and thoughts on it. So let's pray and then we'll go from there. Father, we do thank you again uh, for this time to be together as brothers and sisters, Lord. We thank you for the ability um, to really just be encouraged and built up in our faith. I'm so grateful for these young adults from literally all over your creation, all over your world, Lord, uh, coming together to, I pray, encourage one another to be edified in their walk with you. And Lord, for each and every one of us to just grow closer to you. We, as we learned a few weeks back, less of us and more of you. We all know that's true. We all know we need that. And we need more of your spirit, Lord. We need the power of your spirit living and working through our lives. We want to be those cups running over. We want to have the, the fullness of your spirit flowing forth from our lives into, into the lives of others around us. So I pray again, you'd bless this time. You'd lead us. You'd guide us in Jesus name. Amen. So what it is, um, and this poll that we're going to ask you is to do with um, something that we just believe, you know, as a, as a ministry, uh, the Behold Israel ministry, there's something we do uh, regularly, and it's, it's called the Public Reading of Scripture, um, PRS. And, you know, as young adults, we also see the benefit and the blessing of reading the Scripture, right? I, I know for myself, honestly, and if I'm, if I'm truthful, uh, it really wasn't until, <laughs> I hope I'm always being truthful with you. Um, it wasn't until I was 22 years old that I really, really started to read my Bible. I just didn't pre previously. And I look back with regret, honestly, because when I was finally reading my Bible, I was looking back going, oh, I was missing this. Why, why wasn't I doing this sooner? Because it, it really, it was a grief to me that I went through my teen years and, and into even my, you know, university years without really knowing the Lord the way I could have and should have. And, and it would have been so much better if I had. So one of the points of that is, you know, when we read the word of God, it, it literally is, is becoming a part of us. And, and that's where um, we've been doing this public reading of scripture. Well, one of the things we want to do is a young adults public reading of scripture, but we do it a little different than at this stage anyway, than we do it for the, for the ministry um, where we would have you guys uh, record. We're going to, we would assign you a chapter um, and, and you'd record it. You'd use probably your phone, most likely the obvious choice, um, just in the long way, not the landscape way. And, and you just literally have, have it set up and you'd read that chapter. And then we'd be using it, um, as we each week we'd go through on Instagram and it would be on there as we, as we make our way through the, through the scriptures, we're probably going to start in the book of Romans. Um, so here's the poll. We want to ask, how many of you would be willing to do that? I know not everybody is up for something like that, but at the same time, um, you know, some might feel shy, but others would be happy to do that. So we want to just give you a chance to um, let us know if, if that's something you'd be up for. And so uh, Nick's going to um, you know, give you a poll, but before, before I, before I have Nick do that, I just want to encourage you guys with something else. Cause I know some who get on here. I mean, obviously it can be a bit daunting and a bit scary to think, I don't know if I want to speak, but I've seen how many times somebody stepped out of their comfort zone and said something and shared something that has been a huge blessing to all of us. And I just want to encourage you guys, because some of you maybe feel a bit of fear and trepidation in that a whole idea of, of talking or being, you know, seen publicly or speaking publicly. Um, and, and I wanted to share this because, uh, my good buddy, no nonsense, Nick, um, you know, if he, if he was to tell you his story, uh, you know, the truth is Nick gets quite nervous when it comes to public speaking. And I know some of you are sitting there going, no, not no nonsense, Nick, no way. Like, are you kidding? He's the most comfortable and the funniest guy I ever met, you know? Um, right. Right. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> but, uh, either way, either way, 
the point being, I, I think, you know, and he can speak for himself, obviously, in this, but, but, you know, just so you realize, here's a guy who knows full well that this is something that he can get nervous about and a little bit, you know, you know, it's seeing all your, your scary, I mean, your nice faces out there that makes him nervous and, but, but genuinely, um, but he does it. And, and it's been a blessing for all of us, you know, in terms of stepping out of his comfort zone. So I just want to encourage you guys with that because sometimes the Lord might be challenging you in the same way to do something that maybe you weren't initially feeling like that was what you'd want to do, but then you realize the blessing that comes from it. Is that right, Nick? Am I, am I speaking truth yeah. here? Or? Yep. Spot on. I get nervous and um, I can get so nervous. I get, I start feeling sick and um, I know some of it is, is spiritual attacks. That's, there's no question, but there's, there is a, a bit of apprehension of coming on. I, I, you know, I'm, I got to be careful how I say things and and I try to think of the words I need to speak and you start doubting yourself and and um it's not that I'm worried about what people think of me it's I just I want to represent God well and if I don't do that I start beating myself up over it so um yeah I I I encourage you all just to step out of your comfort zone and and um you know partake participate with this with this new concept that we have where we ask if you would like to read scripture uh record it and have it posted where thousands and thousands of people are going to see it but they but they're going to be encouraged this isn't a about us it's about god it's about jesus and so when we can make it about him it does take that that burden off and you do feel you know his presence and um the fear kind of just goes away once you start doing it yeah so are we going to launch the poll yeah, is that what... now you, okay you yep so someone asked recording by audio or video we, we, it would like video so some of you i know some of you don't have phones maybe but if you can get to a, a computer or something just to be able to record um you know it takes a few minutes for reading a chapter so if you're able to do that that would be great and we'd love to see that but Let's launch this poll, first of all, to see how many you would even like to do this. So the question on the poll is, would you be willing to read the Bible, the Bible publicly? So I'm going to launch the poll and let's see what we get here. We've got uh, an answer says yes. We've got for sure and absolutely. <laughs> and man, I have not seen results of a poll be this skewed, to be honest with you. I am. Um, I'm surprised that there aren't any negatives here that nobody wants to not do this. Yeah. I mean, wow. literally it looks like full participation from. The yeah. Board. That's, uh, that is shocking. I am, I am shocked. All right. I'm going to end the poll in a couple of seconds here, three, two, one, and I'm going to share the results. So we have 43% of you said yes. 9% said for sure, but 49% Jeff, I said yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is wow. incredible. Wow. Yeah. So literally no naysayers. It's it's pretty impressive. Yeah. So someone anyway. said someone said systems rigged. I I don't see how that's possible. <laughs> no, no, not in this day and age. We we know that, you know, it's on the up and up. So anyway, yeah. So genuinely, um uh if you would do this, please, if you said, whether you said yes, whether you said for sure, or you said absolutely, either of those options, um, can you please in the chat, send your email to Abigail. So um, Abigail, put your hand up there. Yep. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> and I would try Abigail, why don't you why don't you tell everybody how to pronounce your surname? So I don't absolutely demolish it. Oh, it's Le Pao Pao. It's a Filipino surname, so it's kind of different when you listen to it, but it's, I think it's common here. Okay. So, yeah. So, if you could send your email address to Abigail Le Pao Pao, how's that? Is yeah. that decent? Is that decent? <laughs> Not really. <I> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, but then again, having said that with a a surname that I mean, if you guys didn't hear me pronounce my surname, I wonder how many of you would know that it was Quazo. So there you go. Well, anyway. I've got lots of responses. So this Great. is really amazing. Thank you, guys. Cool. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to that, then that's going to be good. It's going to be really good. Um, 
Jeff, before you go on, sorry, would, were you asking for if there were new people? Yeah, yeah, that was something that we definitely wanted to, to do. Okay, so we we do have someone here from, from New York. Who's, wow. Who's come on, yeah. Welcome, by the way. And all you new people, welcome. Sorry, yeah, I was just sending a quick note here. All right. Um, so I'm going to ask Jason if he wouldn't mind. Um, we're going to put up the, the verses, and um, we're going to be in John chapter 4. And if Jason um, can read those for us today, that would be awesome. All right. John chapter four, beginning in verse 16, Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband for you have had five husbands and the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. You know, as we look at this story, there's something that we realize about Jesus as he meets with this woman and we've come to know her as the woman of Samaria or the woman at the well. <clears throat> Jesus is, as we've been shown, as we've learned already from the gospel of John, the living word of God. He literally is God speaking in our world. He's God's communication to this world. At the same time, God's been so gracious and so kind to us to also give us the Bible. He's given us the written Word of God. And, and what we know about these two things, with Jesus being the living word and the Bible being the written word, is what Hebrews chapter 4 and Jeremiah 17 tell us. In Hebrews chapter 4, it says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there's no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. And can I just say, I know for some of us, this when we hear something like this, that the word of God is so piercing, is so enlightening and so exposing, literally, that all things are naked and open before him. It just speaks of this kind of idea of being you know, fully transparent. It's, it's evident for us, isn't it, why some of us almost might want to avoid reading the Bible. Because if we're engaged in an activity, if we're doing something that we know we shouldn't, we also know that by approaching the Word of God, there's going to be conviction. And there's kind of almost this sense of, well, ignorance is bliss. And if I don't look and know the truth, then that way I can still keep doing the things I want to do without feeling bad about it or feeling guilty about it. And, and yet what we also know in Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10, it tells us the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? But God tells us, I, the Lord, search the heart and I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. 
So again, in the same way, sometimes we might be hesitant to, to open the Bible or to come to the scriptures because we know that, you know, the light might be shining there. It could be the same with our relationship with God. We, uh, you know, we might want to you know, be hesitant to come to Jesus because, again, if we're doing something that's wrong, if we're doing something that we don't want to stop or change, then we feel like we need to avoid Jesus because otherwise we're going to feel, again, guilty and convicted. Here's the thing. What we know is true is the Bible tells us Jesus is the light of the world, right? And what we know about light is just that. It exposes what's in the dark. Now, it was interesting in this story. Did you guys note where Jesus asked this question of the woman, right? Hey, um, you know, go, go find your husband or go get your husband. And she says, well, I actually don't have a husband. And he immediately, <laughs> with laser-like um, accuracy, points to the truth of her situation in that you're absolutely right. At least, you know, although you aren't wanting to deal with this issue yet, you've had five husbands and the guy you're with right now isn't even your husband. So you're clearly, you know, living in sin. And there's so many different aspects of this that, that are a real issue for you. And, and her response is what I want to focus on for a minute. We kind of named this today, excuses, excuses. And the reason being is because she takes the discussion here. Jesus is shining his light right into her life. Like I said, almost with laser, um, you know, trajectory right in on this very issue of her life. Her life is, is, a, is a mess, really, is, is, the, is the reality of the situation. And yet, without almost kind of missing a beat, she comes up with a theological question. And, and what this is, it's a classic smokescreen. And we see this happen all the time when you want to talk to somebody about the Lord and you want to share truth about the, the, you know, their condition as a, as a sinner in need of a Savior. This classic smokescreen of instead of dealing with the real hard issue of sin in our life and our personal need for repentance and forgiveness, she instead brings up this theological question. Well, our people worship on this mountain. You guys, you know, the Jews worship in, in Jerusalem. Which one's the right, you know, and, and which has nothing to do with the fact that, you know, because she says, oh, I perceive you're a prophet. But the truth is she's kind of deflecting. She's trying to, whoa, you know, um, keep the the light from shining right in penetrating her heart and so she brings up this topic and paul when he's talking to his son in the faith timothy in chapter 6 verses 3 through 5 he says if anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words even the words of our lord jesus christ and to the doctrine which accords with godliness he's proud knowing nothing but listen to this, is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, reviling, suspicions. Here, here's the bit. Check this out in verse 5. Useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain from such withdraw yourself. So this idea of useless wranglings of men. But then also we go on to Titus chapter 3 verses 9 and 10. And it tells us to avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law. Why? Because they're unprofitable and useless. And so the idea here is that somebody might try and bring these topics up to avoid the real heart issues. It's like, oh, well, I think this and I think that, and I want to debate this point and debate that point. And yet what the Bible shows us as it goes on in verse 10, it says, reject a device of man after the first and second admonition, knowing that such a person, here's the key, is actually warped and sinning, already being self-condemned. So the idea is they are in sin, but they don't want to deal with that sin. So they'd rather debate the, the theological points to try and deflect or, or avoid dealing with the real issues. But what we know about light as Jesus is this light of the world, as his word is that lamp to our feet, that light to our path, is that when light is concentrated, when it's when it's honed in and it's concentrated in this way, it can perform wonders. What do I mean? Well, as I was alluding to earlier, when Jesus was honing in on this woman's issue, it was with laser-like you know, uh, pinpoint accuracy. Well, a laser is actually... What is it? It's concentrated light. And when we look up kind of what a laser is, it tells us it's inherently 
a pure source of light. And by careful design, lasers and the components of a laser, it's the purity of the laser light that can be improved more than the purity of any other light source. So what we know about lasers, and, and honestly, this is just a kind of interesting connection I saw with Jesus being the light of the world and then how we have lasers in our world, which are concentrated light. And this is one where you could probably, any of you science types, would probably be really interested to do a deeper study. And maybe there's even more cool stuff that kind of comes out, you know, from the fact that Jesus is the perfect source of light and lasers are, are concentrated light. Either way, as many of you do already know, in the medical industry, you know, carbon dioxide lasers are used in many types of surgery because they're more precise and they're sense more sensitive as well than a scalpel. And I'm, I'm immediately reminded, aren't you, of the word of God. It's, you know, cuts between the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, right? That similar idea of a scalpel, um, you know, getting in there and, and performing surgery to help us in our, you know, areas of need. They, we know that, you know, lasers, again, can be used to remove tattoos without skin grafts, as well as painlessly clearing out, and that maybe some of you didn't know this, the rot out of your teeth. <laughs> and, and lasers are used for surgery. They're often less invasive, which means the person can recuperate a lot quicker. And a laser can be removed to remove or can be used to remove certain types of tumors or to correct a patient's vision. You guys are obviously familiar with LASIK surgery by for, you know, performing or reforming rather the lens of the eye. So, so the benefit of lasers is the damage to the surrounding tissue in, and as well as bleeding is, is greatly reduced because of how accurate you know, that laser is. And really in many ways in this story, we see a perfect example of how the Lord's laser-like examination breaks through all the different layers of resistance that this woman is putting up to get to the core issue. And, and what this says to me, and I hope it you know, says the same thing to you. And again, today, last week, um, we, we were talking about the overflow of the Holy Spirit and how the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And, and you guys shared some stories. And again, we want to give you an opportunity to share today. And there were some who, who actually wanted to share last week, and, and you might not have gotten a chance. We ran out of time, actually. And, and so if there's something still on your heart that you'd wanted to share from last week, I want to give you that opportunity when we finish. Please write into Nick and let him know um, that there was something on your heart about you know just the, the work of the Holy Spirit in your life and how God was working that you wanted to share. We'd love to hear it. It's such a blessing to hear your testimonies and the thing God's doing in your life. Um, at the same time, today, as we're looking at this topic, this idea of how when the Lord is working, how there's times where he works by way of conviction, doesn't he? There's the conviction of the Holy Spirit where that light <laughs> is shining in on an area of our life where we don't necessarily maybe want to receive it. We don't want to hear it, but we know we need to. And how the Lord is challenging us to maybe give something over or leave something with him or actually allow him, if you would, to perform that surgery, you know, in our life to take away that that cancerous um you know, tumor of sorts when it comes to the sin that could be in our life. And so what we realize is exactly that. When we think about the Lord shining his light in and, and really wanting to do that work in our life, I want to encourage all of us. There's no point. There's absolutely no point in trying to cover your sin and make excuses or explain it away. Because it isn't as if the Lord doesn't already know everything about you. Because you're going to hear this woman, isn't she? She's going to say, oh, well, we know the, when the Messiah comes, he's going to tell us everything about it. You know, and then he, she goes into the village later, doesn't she? And she says, this guy told me everything about myself. And that's the truth. Jesus already knows everything about you. Every, everything you're thinking. What does it say back in Jeremiah 17? I'm the one who, who tests the hearts and tries the mind. You know, I know what's going on. And so the best answer is just simply to come clean. And what is, we're going to see later in, in the, the truth. The truth will set you free. What a great place to be, just being able to lay it all out there, knowing that he knows anyway. It's not like you're covering anything like Jesus doesn't see it. You know, you can try and sugarcoat it or try and cut. He's like, I already know, so why don't you just tell me? Um, because what we need to do, here's the thing, we need to be honest. But oftentimes the way this works is we first need to be honest with ourselves that this issue or that area in our life is actually sin. As humans, it's amazing how good we are at manufacturing justifications for the things we do wrong. We can give 10 reasons why it isn't our fault, 
possibly somebody else's fault even or or you know what we're doing isn't that bad or you know actually we're much better than those people etc 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 right we could go on and on but the point is god who sees all and knows all and as we said with laser light precision shines his beam on an area of our life, just like he did with this woman, right? Oh, um, can you go get your husband? Oh, he hit right in the heart of the issue, didn't he? Because he knew full well her need. And that area of our life, he, he's identifying it to us. Why? He's identifying it to us as sin because it's not because he's mean or he doesn't like us. It's because he, it's, he knows it's hindering our relationship with him. But now we have a choice. When, when that happens in our life, we have a choice, don't we? Do we make excuses or are we honest with ourselves and God? And the reason I say we need to be honest with ourselves is because both you and I, as the Bible tells us, quite often we can actually have the tendency and even the propensity to be self-deceived. We can very easily, as the Bible says, deceive ourselves. And as we read in Jeremiah 17, right, our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked. And so we can literally, to do something we want to do, we can always find a way to, as I say, justify it. And our hearts are deceitful. They, they will find a way to do that. And yet God says it's sin. And if he says it's sin, I have to ask the question, am I harmonizing with him in this assessment? What do I mean? First John chapter 1, verses 8 through 10 says this, if we say that we have no sin. Here it is. This is what the Bible says. We deceive ourselves. And that would mean the truth is not in us. However, here's the good news. If we confess our sins, and, and this word for confess is the reason why I asked the question, are we harmonizing with God? Because this word in its original context, in its original language, is actually the word homologeo, which is where we get our word <clears throat> for harmonize. So in other words, what's being declared here by John, the, the apostle, is God says what you're doing is sin and it's wrong and it, it separates you from him. Now, are you going to harmonize with God? In other words, are you going to agree with God? Are you going to confess that as the sin that it is? Or are you going to try and make an excuse and avoid it? Because if you do that, then you're actually just deceiving yourself. As, as the, you know, verse 8 told us. But here's the good news. If we are willing to harmonize, if we're willing to be honest with ourselves and with God, and we're willing to confess that sin, here's the beautiful story, end of the story. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because if we say we've not sinned, we're making him a liar. That means his word isn't in us. And so we see here that Jesus is saying, this is why you need my word. Because what we've just seen, what you and I have just seen is that light. The light has just shined on our lives as Jesus has just explained those things to us through his word. And this is the beauty of the work of the spirit. Because the work of the spirit and the work of the truth is God wants to work in your life and in my life. As we open the word of God, he will speak to us. And that's the truth, right? At the same time, he's going to work by the power of his spirit in your mind and my mind. He's going to convict us of sin and of things in our life that maybe need to be forgiven. He's not doing it to, to condemn us. He's doing it so that we'll be free, so that we'll have the cancer removed, so that we'll be somebody who is experiencing the fullness of what he has for us. And yet what we find sometimes in, in our day and age, this idea of spirit and truth, I find is an interesting one where Jesus said we need to worship in spirit and truth. Because we have a, a lot of extremes in our world today, especially in the churches, where some churches might you know, go with the idea of truth with no spirit. And, and we're told you know, that we will, in that situation, will dry up. But spirit with no truth and it's possible that you could blow up you know just all sorts of activity but not a lot of actual stability but then when we see this idea of spirit and truth in beautiful balance then we're going to grow up we're going to really become all that god wants for us to be so the word of god and the power of the holy spirit being doers of the word not just hearers only so here we see the testimony of the word of god and the Spirit of God is this. We can try and hide, but it is futile. 
We can try and deceive ourselves. But what we know is the truth will expose us for who we really are. And we need to be honest with ourselves and with the Lord. And the final issue that this woman was confronted with was plain and simple. It's this. She realized, I need a Savior. I need a Messiah. And it is the same conclusion that each and every one of us will come to if we're willing to humble ourselves and to be truthful about our own condition. But here's the best part of the story. As the woman acknowledges this need, there is for this Messiah, Jesus does the same thing with her that he desires to do with you and with me every single day. What does he respond to her by saying? I who speak to you am he. Jesus is shining his delight. He's shining his light in our direction. Not because he hates us, not because he's a spoil sport. He shines his light our direction. Kind of, I guess you could say, in the same way, like a doctor. If you've been to the doctor for an examination and they shine the light sometimes in your eyes, or they shine it down your throat, it's to show you whether or not there's a sickness. You know, there's something wrong and you need a cure. Well, I guess we could finish with this. I got some good news and I got some bad news. We'll do the bad news first. The great physician has indeed examined us and he's found us to be sick. So sick, we're going to die from it because what we know is sin is killing us. However, the good news, there's a cure. There's a savior and his name's Jesus. And like a laser, here's the thing I thought was kind of interesting. This is what I was saying about this idea of studying the connection between a laser and, and just the, the pure light. Not only does he expose the sin with his light, but through his spirit, he also forgives us and cleanses us and heals us from all sin. He performs surgery and gives us a new heart. So here's the beauty, you know, beautiful thing about it. You can be made completely whole. There just needs to be an honesty on our part, a willingness and a surrender. So I want to pray for each one of us. And, um, I also wonder, one of the things I had asked, you know, last week, um, as we, as we finish and maybe something you wanted to share too, is, you know, I'd said just this idea about asking for the Holy Spirit, you know, when we finished taking five minutes and just asking for the, the Holy Spirit to, to speak to you and to, and to work in your heart and in your life. And, you know, just that was something as well that we finished with last week. And I just wanted to give any of you a chance too to, to feedback on that. If there's something that God was, was speaking to your heart and you wanted to share with us as an encouragement as well. So let me pray and then we'll, we'll go from there and please write to Nick and let him know um, if there's something you'd like to share with the group. Father, we do thank you again for this time. And Lord, what we do realize is, yeah, that there can be a heaviness when, when we think about the light shining in and seeing something in our life that it even maybe causes us to break out in a sweat, Lord. Oh, no. Uh, but yet the good news of what we just saw there in, in 1 John, that when we are just honest with ourselves and with you, you already know anyway. So it's not as if we're hiding anything from you. It's not like you're not going to find out. You already know. But yet when we confess it, when we harmonize with you, you are so gracious and you're so kind. You provided a way to forgive us and you gave your life so that we could be forgiven. So you will be able to cleanse us and heal us and give us that new start, that fresh start, that brand new beginning that, you know, everyone in Christ is a new creation. The old things can be put away and everything can be made brand new, that cleansing that can come when we confess. And so, Lord, I thank you for that truth today. And I pray for each and every one of my brothers and sisters here on this uh, call and those who are watching, um, Lord, that they would just know that confidence to know that you're wanting to do that in their life, that yes, you know, who you're speaking to right now, behold, I am he. You are the Messiah. You are the Savior that we all need. And none of us have it together, Lord. None of us have it perfect. We know that. But we thank you that you do. And you are our Savior today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, Nick, anybody writing in to you? Uh, right now I have, uh, I have Lane. Lane, where, where are you there? Lane I has, am. Lane has a background of himself. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> I have. Uh, I have me, myself, and I, and then like six others. Um, so yeah, I counted it, including the Jesus on my shirt. There's like eleven faces <laughs> on this screen. So we'll add that to uh, the number of people on this Zoom call. <laughs> Yeah, just toss that on the total. That way we can, you know, boost our numbers. Um, 
<clears throat> you had so something to share, Lane. You had something to share about uh, First John, was it? You said. Yeah, yeah. First uh, John one nine is actually one of my favorite verses, um, because I love that in that verse it says, "If if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins," uh, because God is just, um, and so what we deserve when we confess our sins is forgiveness of them. And so he, I, I just, I love that that that's the just reaction that he has to our confession and to our surrender. Um, our humility uh, is to forgive us of them. Uh, and that to him is just, and that's so, it's so incredible to see his forgiveness uh, in our lives. Cause I, I feel like even with many of us as believers, somebody might say, Oh, well, you know, I ran over your dog. That was bad. I'm sorry. Uh, we wouldn't forgive them just like that. Uh, it, we would, you know, we would still be so upset at them. Uh, and, but that's what they deserve. They, you know, they confessed their sin uh, and they deserve forgiveness. Um, right. And I love God's mercy, of course, uh, not giving us what we deserve. Uh, but his grace also giving us what we don't deserve. Um, and even in a Bible study I was having last week, we were talking about, um, you know, do you ever feel like you've not gotten what you deserved and stuff like that? And everybody's like, well, you know, I don't make as much money as I think I should or, you know, whatever. And I was, <laughs> I just said, well, I'm glad that we don't get what we deserve because what we all deserve is an eternity in hell. <laughs> and I said, Thankfully, God doesn't give that to us. He gave us that opportunity to not get what we deserve, to not reap uh, the wages of sin in our lives, but to be forgiven uh, and to have rescue from that. Um, and I related a lot to the woman at the well with that, that intellectual, um, <laughs> that intellectual idea just to kind of deflect, because I think it's hard for me to move from concept into practice. Uh, like I, I can talk about the Bible all day, but then I'm like, how do I, I have to constantly go back to that. Like, how does this apply? How do we do this in our lives? Um, and I definitely have a tendency to be off in the clouds a little bit. Oh well, yeah. It's safer there. It's safer. It's safer there for us, isn't it? When we, when we can talk more ethereal than, than actual practical and, and not have to deal with some issues that God's saying, yeah, that's great. I'm glad you got all your doctrine in line. <laughs> now let's talk about this issue that you're, that you're walking through that is a struggle. Let's, let's, let's walk about, you know, let's, let's talk about that now. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's cool. Good. Thank you, Lane. That was awesome. Thanks. Thank you, brother. Let's go with uh, Joel. Joel. Welcome. Hey, Shalom. How y'all doing? Good. How are you, Joel? Doing good. Doing good. Um, well, I just wanted to share um, two passages, actually from the Old Testament, that helped me. Because um, a lot of times I, re I resort to the New Testament to help me with stuff. Um, but let me see. I wanted to share about how the, the prophets in the Old Testament, because I always thought the prophets, they were pretty good people. And you know, they weren't struggling with sin or anything like that. But if you ever read um, Isaiah 6, um, let's see, Isaiah 6, sorry. Uh, Isaiah 6, verse 3. And and sorry, I'm reading from the King James Version. Um, sorry. Um, verse 3. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Verse 4. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. And then verse 5, then said I, which is the prophet Isaiah, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Um, so with uh, prophet Isaiah, um, that helped, helped me. I was like, wow, even the prophet had to, in a sense, confess his sin of, of a man of unclean lips. And, 
And as you read more down, you'll see in verse six, then flew one of the uh, seraphim or an angel unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which had taken with the throngs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, lo, this has touched thine lips and thine iniquity is taken away and thy sin purged. And then verse eight, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, who shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. <laughs> so, and I, and I did watch the um, prayer meeting yesterday on the Zoom on through YouTube. And a lot of times I'm shy about sharing about my faith in Jesus Christ and opening up about it. Um, every, every time I think about that, I think of how he sent prophet Isaiah saying, who will go for uh, us, speaking of the, the Lord, the triune God in heaven. And he said, here, my Lord, send me. Um, but and also in Daniel 9, um, it's such a blessing because although it's speaking of prophecy and um, things to come, it's a blessing because um, not only is Daniel the prophet of Israel um, confessing his sin, but actually let me read it. Um, I'm going to start in verse 17. Daniel 9, verse 17. Now, therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thine servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O my God, incline thine ear and hear, open thine eyes, and behold our desolation, and the, and the city which is called by thy name, for we do not present our supplications before thee, for our righteousness, but for thy great mercy. Um, and when you see that, not our righteousness, but for his great mercies, and because our righteousness in, our, in the last portion of Isaiah 6 is um, but filthy rags. Um, and it says, verse 19, O Lord, hear, O Lord, forgive, O Lord, hearken and do, do uh, defer not for thine own sake, O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name, speaking of the children of Israel. And then verse 20, it says, and while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord, my God, for the holy mountain of, of God. And then obviously an angel, the, the angel uh, Gabriel appeared to him. But what really stuck out to me was that Daniel the prophet confessed his sin before the Lord and in the New Testament, when Jesus is describing, the, describing a Pharisee versus a repentant sinner, um, when the sinner says, have mercy, um, have, mercy, have mercy on me, O God, for I am a sinner, that's the prayer that God hears, and that was an eye-opener for me. And that's why um, the gospel, I truly understand the gospel now, that it's, it's not about works of righteousness, which we've all done, but it's through faith and through his uh God's mercy that we are saved. So. Yeah, Joel, thank you. I think I think you you highlighted something too, which I think is a temptation for any of us. As uh, in Joel in um, Isaiah six, when you talk about Isaiah recognizing his area of weakness or his sin in his own life, but it came after, like you said, when he came into the presence of the Lord and he saw himself for who he really was. But here's the thing, right? For the first five chapters of Isaiah, if you go back and read it, right. All he's doing is presenting, he's pr proclaiming woe on everybody else. Woe is you, woe is you, woe is you, woe is everybody else for all that you're doing wrong. You guys are bad. You're not doing the right thing. And then all of a sudden, as you said, he comes into the presence of the Lord for himself and he goes, oh, woe is me. I am undone. <laughs> and 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 that's that the temptation we have to avoid our own weaknesses our own sin is it's easier to focus on everybody else's what they're doing wrong and as we focus on everybody else doing wrong it kind of makes us feel justified like oh, we're not that bad okay we're not that and it, it again it's another one of those deflecting tools of if we can keep just talking about somebody else's wrongdoing or their sin then we don't have to talk about ourselves <laughs> and so yeah that's a good insight man joel just someone just sent me a message saying that um this actually this is a shout out to georgina it says uh that there's a messianic singer uh, called Marty Getz. Yes, Marty Getz. Okay, and uh, he sings about Isaiah six. Uh, so just to kind of let you know, and the and the it's based off that chapter called Hineni. Here I am. Here am I. 
and uh, just she wanted me to say that to you. So. Okay. <laughs> Thank All right. Well, thanks. Thanks so much for sharing, Joel. Okay. Uh, Natty had something to share. Natty. Yeah. Hey. Hi, um, Natty. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Good. Yes. So uh, I have thought about it, and um, I saw that, like recently, I I had felt like you I had failed. Like you said, in uh, part of like the what I call like religious forgiveness, right? Like you come to God not because you really like uh, like want to come and like you really feel it in your heart, but just because like it's something religious, right? Like you come and you say, "God, I'm sorry." You like you know you 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 did something wrong, but uh, in your heart, like it's not like true with God mm -hmm. and I think it's also important that if we come to God we have all to like think about our things our sins and reflect it about how God like see it and really feel remorse about it and not just come religiously to him and so that's what part of it yeah yeah it's not just a ritual a, re a religious ritual that you do you know fulfilling certain duties you, you do it because it's a heartfelt decision and it's a relationship that you have with God. That's the difference is without a relationship, you're just doing things like checking off the boxes. I, I, I asked for forgiveness. I did the certain requirements and, and you go down the list. But exactly. when, when you have a relationship, it's like you realize, hey, I hurt someone and I want to apologize and, and really say sorry. And the repentance is the changing of the mind. You have to turn 180 degrees to from what you were doing or else you're just going to continue doing the same thing. So, but that's good, Natty. That's exactly right. That we can go through the motions religiously. And it's not, that's why I tell people when they say, oh, you're a Christian that's, uh, or you're religious. And it's like, no, I'm not religious. It's not about a religion. It's about a relationship. You can call it whatever you want, but it's a relationship with the one God, the one true God. Yeah. And we and we see that in our own lives, like when somebody confesses to us about something, if they don't <laughs> yeah. show any remorse, we don't, they're like, oh, they don't really care. And you see it in like a court of law, like when somebody commits a murder or something. And the judge usually asks the perp before they're trotted off to jail, do you have any something to say to the family? And if that person shows remorse. That, that does help the victim's family to, I think, have some closure. So it's the same thing with God. God wants us to feel some remorse. You know, our sins are forgiven and we're white as, white as snow, but he needs to see that we, wanna, we want to change, and that's how we bless him. Mm. Yeah. Now, Natty, I just wanted to say um, that was good that you said that because you're saying we got to come to God with our heart. And when you confess with your heart, he knows that. Just like Jeff said, he, he's got laser beams and he sees right through our body and he can see where our heart is at all the time. So when, when we even go to God, he knows if we're going with all our heart, if it's true. And if we do something with someone and we share the gospel or we talk about we love them, God knows if we're doing that with our heart. So he knows it all. Like, um, like the Bible does say, if you give a glass to someone with your heart, that's so simple, but yet God blesses us for doing something with our heart. So there's a lot of things that I've done without my heart in it. Like I had to do it. And I know those are, those are going to mean nothing in the future when God sees me, but I know when I do something with my heart for someone or for the Lord, because I do it for the Lord. I love people because of the love of law, the Lord in my life. So that's how we live our lives is that we live with his love and we can do it with our heart because that's, that's the goal is to do things for the Lord with our heart. And then to come to the Lord and say, God, I can't speak, but you can speak through me because we've got him in us that loves us so much. And he's with us every step of the way. If we just ask him to help us. And, um, but it starts with, you know, a heart of repentance 
And then God gives us a new heart that we can walk in and just really live out this life for him. So thanks, Maddie. That's, that's great. It's always about the heart. <laughs> Good. Uh, let's see. We've got a first time person here named Mark. Mark, can I uh, ask you to unmute? And Mark, do you have a, notice your video's off. Do you have, can you put your video on, please? Um, oh, it's really dark here. Yeah, it's, it's like three o'clock in the morning. I was in bed watching this. Okay, uh, there you go. <laughs> hey, how are you? Good. How, how you doing, Mark? You're from Australia? Yeah, yeah. And you're working, uh, you, you had something to say, sorry. Oh, yeah, I just, yeah, I just thought it was um, just a great word that was shared, um, you know, about, you know, being honest with God because, you know, he already knows where, where our faults are and that's something that, you know, we pray for a lot. I know in my church is just God to make clear in our hearts um, where we fall short and, and where, where we're living in sin and, and, and that we can sort of bring that to light and, and, and align ourselves more with, with walking with Christ. So, yeah, I just thought it was a really, really important and good, good word to share. Good. Where, where in Australia are you, Mark? Uh, Maitland. So it's like two hours north of Sydney. Okay. Okay. Well, welcome. So this is this the first time, like, have you heard of us before here? No, I only, like, I was at a, like, a life group. I'm not sure if you know what they are. Like, it's a, like little church in big church sort of thing. Like, Yeah, you, yeah, you know, life groups are like uh, home churches or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so we were at a, at a life group, Connect Morning Tea on, on Saturday, and um, I was talking to a guy, and he's like, oh, I'll check out this app, and yeah, so I just got the notification. Like, I was at work a couple of hours ago, and got a notification on my way home, and I was like, "Oh, I'll check that out." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've really enjoyed it, and I, I, I can't wait to share it with all our young adults and and tell them to get on here and and check it out because yeah, it's it's really, I think discipleship and 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 mentoring is such an important thing that can help people find strengths and 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 ways to better align themselves with with god yeah good well welcome here mark thank and yeah you, mark. yeah we thank you for for sharing the group and we encourage all of you guys out there to uh just share with your friends who if you think that this could be really helpful which we believe it is but um they got to want to be here don't don't force anyone but at the same time uh, uh just share and uh get the word out and we'd love to see more people come to know him and come alongside him and and just walk this walk with you guys all right. So thank you, Mark. Thanks for sharing. That's great. Um, we have, uh, well, let's see here. Uh, is it Janin? It's Janan. Hi, Janan. Sorry. Yes. How are you? Where are you from again? I'm from South Africa. South Africa. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. So um, I'm also one of those people who's quite nervous to like um, share their faith. I, I'm not someone who goes around telling people I'm a Christian. But um, for me, I found the best way is to like do it through actions. And so I try to show people without actually having to say it. And um, I found one of the most important things is having people around you who do know um, the word really well so that when you're in certain situations, you know, you can go to those people and they know the word and they are wiser than you and they can assist you in whatever way you need. So, yeah, because I, I don't, to be honest, I, I like am not one of those people who knows the Bible super well. So for me, it, it really helps to have the people around me who can advise me and help me and um, direct me to the right scriptures and stuff like that. That's cool, Janan. You know, I want to encourage you too that you can you can always get to know the Bible better. <laughs> you know, I know, her. I know. Her. <laughs> you know, but seriously, that that was you know you heard me say maybe at the beginning. I don't know if you did or not, but uh, 
that was my issue. You know, I didn't really know my Bible either. And, and what happened to me was when I first started reading it for myself and really taking it on board personally, and that wasn't until I was 22 years old, if I'm really, you know, really reading it for myself. Um, it, I was like, oh my goodness, why haven't I known this sooner? Like I was, I was grieved. Like I genuinely was grieved that I had missed so much of this for such a long period of time. Like, you know how much more helpful this would have been at times in my life when I could have known what I should have said or should have done. And, and it, so it's not a, it's not a, um, like in, in saying that to you, it's not like a condemning thing. It's just genuinely like an encouragement, like, oh my goodness, I, you know, just like if somebody's missing out on like amazing food at this cool restaurant downtown, you're like, you've got to try this. Like, you've got to try this. It's so good. And you're missing out if you don't, you know, it's that same idea. So anyway. Yeah. So it's actually funny for me. It was the opposite. When I was a kid, I like knew all the verses. I used to win all of the competitions at church. <laughs> and I don't know, something happened like when I became a teenager and I've kind of like went the wrong way. So yeah, um, my, my latest thing is to just try and read one verse a day on that, on the Bible app, just so it's at least like a start Absolutely. and then we can move forward from there. That's, that's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. That's awesome. Good. So cool. Thanks guys. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, it's, We've got time for one more, I think, here. So let's do, uh, let's see here. Jafer, Jafer, are you there? Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, hi. Uh, hey, everyone. Um, I just want to share Romans 12, verse 2. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be a transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I um, uh, just want to highlight, um, renew your mind. That really touches me because... I believe it is very vital in the walk of faith and also in worshiping in spirit and in truth. I uh, acknowledge in myself, uh, this is a very big need. Um, I'm seeing a lot of spaces to grow um, within and, and not only to renew my mind and also to um, maintain in it. So, yeah, that's um, my little encouragement. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jafer. That's great. We got to walk in, in the word. That's right. Renewing our minds every day. And the only thing that can renew us is the word. There's nothing else that can renew us. So thank you, Jafer, for sharing that. Okay, guys. Um, Jeff. What, what time is it, Jeff? I think it's time for No Nonsense Nick is what time I think it is. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time for trivia. And today's today's uh, prizes are, are, I'm going to give you a choice, actually. Uh, we're either going to have, you can choose between the Behold Israel journal with a beautiful Behold Israel aluminum pen, and of course, the Behold Israel super sought after, ultra rare wristband. Hey Nick, not not to cut you off, but but I'm getting I'm getting just inundated with you know questions about no no uh, dad joke for us today. All right, you guys want the bad dad joke? <laughs> okay. Was there any money on Noah's Ark? Was there any money on Noah's Ark? Yes. The duck took a bill. The frog took a greenback. And the skunk took a cent. Wow. That's right. Where is it? Where is it? I don't hear it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Thank you.
All right, all right, calm down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jason, aren't you going to say anything? Like, my goodness. Wow. He's speechless. He's speechless. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. one of these, no one of these quiet. two hats. So you get to choose either one of the two ball caps, beautiful cotton with the embroidered logo, one of these two, or the other package. Okay. Hey, Nick. Uh, yes. Ariel's either high fiving you or raising his hand. Where? <laughs> I think that's a face palm. Is it a face palm? Yeah. Is it like this? Yeah. Oh, that would be that would make more sense. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm getting comments. They they actually enjoyed that one. So okay, this is good. It was like I got five, six comments. Ariel says it's face palm. Okay, Ariel. <sighs> okay. This one is, um, I'm trying does, to do, does sorry. Everybody know how to use, does everybody know how to use those? I want to see, could we get a face palm from every single person at once? Could that happen? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. All right, I'm ending this meeting. <laughs> you leaving? You leaving? Don't oh, come, come back, come back, come back, Nick. There we go. All right, guys. <laughs> uh this is uh let's go with the third answer now i'm trying to do one question at least from the book of john so that if you read ahead you should be getting these okay so third answer to me uh if you're new here you got to put it the answer to me in the chat so pick, put your chat get nick and send this answer where were the disciples going when Jesus walked on water, where were the disciples going when Jesus walked on water? Uh, I need, give me the name of the, of the town they were going to. Oh, okay. I thought it was to the okay. bottom of the Sea of Galilee. Okay, we've got. Georgina. Hey. Oh, I got it wrong. Just guess. <laughs> yeah, it was right. You you guess. First of all, is this your first time here? I thought you said. No. Oh, you've been here before. Okay. Where where are you from, Georgie? How many times have you been here before? Uh, this is my third time, I think. But nice. I'm from I'm from Cambridge, um, in England. Ah. Oh, another you care. Yeah. Nice. How far is that from where you are, Jeff? Three hours. Walking, driving, flying, what? <laughs> driving, probably. <laughs> okay. Welcome. And uh, more importantly, what's the answer? Capernaum. Yes, absolutely. So that's John chapter 6, verse 16 to 21. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were frightened. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they were glad to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land to which they were going. So there's like two miracles there. It's like unbelievable. They were immediately at their destination, and Jesus walked on water. So great answer. Uh, you got that. So if you can please put in the chat to me your email address, and then we'll get the shipping details from you. And, and um, if you can also put with your email address the item that you'd like, whether it's the, the ball cap or the journal. OK? Good awesome. Job, Way to go. Way to go. Way to represent the UK. Come on. Yeah. Uh, the question I got here, does the correct answer have to be spelled correctly? Uh, uh, no, you don't have to have spelling. I don't, I don't count spelling because I'd probably spell it wrong too. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. This one, actually, this confirms a lot of stuff that was talked about today. So 
this one I'm going to go with, uh, I think a lot of people are going to get this. So let's go with the fifth answer. And let's all, let's please all of you participate. What Bible character said, here am I, send me. Oh. Okay, let's go back. Okay, okay. I got enough for five at least here. One, two, three, four, five. Jason, Jason, <laughs> it's really too bad that you don't get it. All you right. Know what? You know what? I have something much better. You got my love. I have your phone number. <laughs> that's, that's true. And I'll use it as leverage for you will give me my prize or else everyone else here will. Yeah, you know. I know. You're also, you're also. Remember, Jason, your number is also my most blocked number. <laughs> All right, Britain. Hello, Britain. Do you, do you got a video at all? Try to open. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Hey, everyone. <laughs> oh, is this somebody new? Are you guys new here? Our second week. Second Ooh. week? Where are you from? Uh, from BC, 100 mile BC. Oh, just like northeast of us, northeast of where I live. Where are you from? I'm in Vancouver. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, welcome, yeah. guys. Mm -hmm. Are these your siblings or friends? My siblings. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah. What are their names? Names. I need names. This one's Burden to the left of me. I'm Cooper. And then uh, Rain on the, my right. Welcome, guys. And you know what? I'm feeling super generous. So I'm going to give two of you a prize. No, no, no. no. I'm going to give three of you. I can't right. get one. <laughs> You're getting, yeah, you guys are getting Jason's prize, just so you know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so in the chat, please put... Um, your email address and then we'll send an email within the next day or two and put what you'd like so you know which color hat if you want the hat or if you want the the uh the journal with the pens okay whatever you'd like so okay. just let me know you need the answer yeah oh yeah isaiah. yeah sorry sorry what was the answer guys isaiah yes isaiah chapter 6 verse 8 and i heard the voice of the lord saying whom shall i send and whom will go for us? Then I, then I said, here I am, send me. Thank you. That's awesome. You. Way to go, yeah, guys. And welcome. Guys. Welcome. Continue joining us and, uh, you know, visiting all of you guys out there, by the way. Just keep following us on Instagram, Facebook. Um, what else have we got now? We have a, uh, what's the new one there? Telegram. <laughs> yeah. All these grams golden grams yeah <laughs> all right well guys thank you again it's great to be together i'm actually um just a, a reminder if you've got anything if there's anything on your heart anything you need prayer for or there's something you're dealing with don't hesitate to write to us yad y-a-d at beholdisrael.org we're here for you i uh, hope you know that already but if you don't i'm telling you we're here for you Love you guys, and we're just so grateful to get together and be together like this each week. And as Nick alluded to earlier, you know, if there's others you know, this would be a blessing for them. This is a place where they are very welcome, and it's a place where you guys can know it's a sanctuary. You know, it's a place where we're gonna we're gonna keep looking to the Lord for guidance, direction, uh, clarity, uh, truth, especially in our world at this time. We need light. We need truth uh, to stand and to keep standing. And so uh, we want you to know that this is a place where you can always be. And um, as well as, as Nick mentioned with following us on Behold Israel Young Adults there at, uh, at Instagram. And we look forward to you being in contact. Uh, Abigail will be in contact with you if you've sent your emails to her, right? You got those, Abigail? Cool. Yeah, so we got the email addresses and you guys will be doing those readings of scripture. That'll be really fun. I'm looking forward to that as well. So um, Ariel, since you gave a face palm to Nick, I am going to call you out and ask you if you will close us in prayer today. Yeah.
<clears throat> no problem. Can you hear me? Thanks, buddy. We can hear you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> God, thank you for this evening in most uh, countries here. Uh, we thank you for this meeting that we could be blessed by each other and, uh, and hear each other's uh, voices and see each other and see that we're not alone in this world. We're everywhere. We're all around the world. We pray that you bless this, uh, the rest of this week and, uh, and let us have a good night or morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, guys. Well, we will say goodbye and look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, we'll unmute you and you can just say goodbye from where, wherever you are. Tell us where you are when you say goodbye. Hi, Hi, bye, everybody. Bye. God bless everyone. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. God bless you all. Have bye. a great bye. week. Bye. 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 Goodbye from Texas. Love you guys. Bye, everyone. Thanks. God bless. Thanks for being here. Thanks Bye, for Rob. joining us. Nice Bye. Thank you.